Okay, well, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much to Vanessa and Enrique and to all of you for the opportunity to uh, share a summer project developing a workflow for uploading a Harvard Library Spotlight exhibit curiosity collection uh, to the Wikimedia Commons service. Our pilot utilized the American Currency Collection from Baker Library at Harvard Business School. Uh, so we want to start this presentation off just by extending our thanks to every member of the DSI team. Uh, Vanessa Venti, who invited us here today, was one of our incredibly supportive day-to-day -day colleagues in this wonderful journey. And uh, we're really grateful for her commitment, uh, as well as the commitment of everybody on the DSI team to remaining accessible and uh, just doing the work that it took to keep the internship program alive, even in the middle of this abrupt transition to remote learning and working that we're all living through. Uh, a number of other folks were really helpful at Harvard Library for uh, taking this Wikimedia project off the ground with us and making sure that it was possible for us to do. Those folks included Lena Dennis, Wendy Gogol, Christine Riggle, and Kyle Courtney. So once again, thank you. And for some uh, introductions with just a little bit more detail, I'll hand things off to Irma. Um, hello again, I'm Irma Ari, and I am focusing my master's in computational archival science, digital creation, and data analysis. And hello again, Lee here. Um, my focus is, or uh, primary interest in my grad program, are digital preservation and accessibility. And hi, I'm Scott. Um, my primary interests include digital curation and UX research. So for the purposes of our presentation today, uh, we can disaggregate our workflow into four primary constituent parts from having um, a spotlight exhibit to being able to move those materials and metadata over to Wikimedia Commons. Those four big steps include scripting in Python, uh, documenting in GitLab, authorizing with copyright experts at Harvard Library uh, with help from standardized material available at writestatements.org, and then uploading the materials and metadata using Wikimedia's batch uploading tool called PaddyPen. So going over these steps in a little more detail will help us demonstrate our commitment to uh, developing a process that is understandable and reusable to other folks at Harvard Library long after the final day of our internship. Uh, first off, it's important to note that our scripting and documenting steps should empower others to modify and reuse our workflow as appropriate for other Wikimedia Commons collection uploading projects. So more specifically, it's clear that uh, it's important that clear and detailed documentation about our Python scripts will ensure the software we develop remains understandable to others for its usefulness beyond the American Currency Collection when this workflow is used for other collections well into the future. So moving forward with these stages of the project, uh, the next steps, we have received really detailed and helpful feedback on our documentation from multiple folks within the Harvard Library System, including Vanessa and Enrique. So uh, today and next week, we're going to implement that feedback and just continue improving the documentation one step at a time in relationship with the needs of our audience, our users, as we learned by way of the uh, Scrum project management principles, which a great deal of our internship experience uh, was sort of governed by. And then the other two components, authorizing and uploading, are all about empowering users to engage with Harvard Library's collections in ways compatible with their unique research needs. So regarding authorization, it's critical that researchers know exactly how they can use collection materials on Wikimedia Commons in their own work. An appropriate right statement uh, should not be at all ambiguous regarding what is permissible for reuse. So by using a standardized right statement that was developed by cultural heritage professionals with legal expertise on rightstatements.org, there's just a greater likelihood that Harvard Library will be cited more in future publications as its materials are uh, usable by researchers. And alongside rights assessment, the uh, uploading step using the Patty Pan tool really helps enhance the visibility of Harvard Library's freely available and really rich cultural heritage materials for those that would use them at Harvard and beyond. And in fact, uh, meeting users where they are is really the central underpinning of this project. Uh, before our internship, Harvard Library had learned from studying the needs of image researchers that many of them start their work on Wikimedia Commons 
And that suggested to us that the Wikimedia Commons platform could really help direct users who are keen on sustained engagement with Harvard Library collections in this remote working and learning period uh, to those Harvard Library websites as more collections hopefully are uploaded to Wikimedia Commons from these sort of curated spotlight exhibits using our workflow in the future. And with that, I'll hand things over to Lee. Got it. So you might be wondering why we focused on Harvard's curiosity collections in particular and the construction of both our tool and workflow. So we considered presenting um, or using a curiosity collection on Wikimedia for several reasons. Uh, these collections hold certain advantages. For instance, they already offer a level of curation, more thorough metadata perhaps, that might give us a potential pilot focus and would potentially help streamline the process a little bit more. And so from there, we just kind of concluded that using that um, type of collection would be a great fit for experimenting with a workflow pilot. So as mentioned before, Baker Library's American Currency Collection uh, turned out to be a very viable option for us. It was mentioned to us very early on in the internship. Um, we needed to identify a low risk collection in terms of copyright. So in those terms, old American currency is very, very useful. It's not copyrightable and it's also old enough to be in the public domain. So a little bit more about the collection itself. It contains over 700 pieces of paper money, about 1400 images in total, ranging from the early 18th century to the late 19th century. And we just cribbed a little bit there from the um, collection's online description. But we really thought that um, one can examine the history of American finance and commerce from colonial times through the Civil War by using these materials. So because of the collection, perceived low risk when thinking about permissions, and it's just amazing our resource potential, we decided that the American Currency Curiosity Collection would become our candidate for publication on Wikimedia. So despite our perception that we were in a good place for moving forward, we needed to take into greater consideration the importance of a more intentional rights assessment for the collection. So in our preliminary research regarding what Wikimedia accepts, uh, works need to be explicitly freely licensed and they also need to be public domain in at least the United States or the country of origin. So our pilot would not be possible at all if we did not meet those stipulations. And while these rules really didn't seem like it would hinder our uploading of the items, we still consulted with both Wendy Gogol, who is um, Harvard's manager of digital content and projects, and Christine Riggle, who is the American Currency Collection curator, to ascertain whether there were any other risks or copyright barriers or that we should be aware of. And they both gave us the okay to think about the next step, which as mentioned before, was determining which right statement from rightstatement.org would best suit the collection and would be a part of the collection's metadata at the item level. So after a very, very thorough review, we decided upon the no copyright United States statement as it got across the fact that the collection items are in the public domain within their country of origin. Points that are, as stated, are very important to Wikimedia. So here you can see just a visualization of the workflow we followed to determine the right statement for the collection that is a part of our GitLab documentation. And so far I have discussed phases one through three and with the next slide, I will move on to the final two phases. So the right statement we settled upon, we need a final green light for our upload from Kyle Courtney, who is Harvard's copyright advisor. So we drafted an email to Kyle regarding our proposed right statement, which he approved along with our use of the public domain United States Wikimedia licensing tag. It turns out these Wikimedia licensing tags are required by the site and are necessary to just mitigate the risk of the items being deleted, which would be very, very sad after uploading 1400 images. Uh, so the final step was to integrate the right statement and the licensing tag into the item metadata itself. So at the right of the, we have both the right statement up top in the permission metadata field, and the public domain United States licensing tag, which is below that, appear for each item that has been uploaded. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Irma, and she's going to discuss the tools we developed and utilized to gather what we needed to make this product usable in the first place. So thanks, Lee. And I took the lead on developing the main code of this project, so that is why I am going to attempt to explain it to you all. So. By utilizing this tool, we were able to upload 1.4K images to Wikimedia. And these images were organized under new categories for the Harvard Curiosity Collection, the American Currency Collection, and a general category, numismatics in USA, among others. 
For the first time, Curiosity Collection has a general category in Wikimedia that can be used for other projects. Also, I have to mention that this project initiated the numismatics in USA category. Previously, other countries already had this category created and initialized. All the images were uploaded along with the metadata arranged inside a Wikimedia template. Knowing that Harvard has developed a, sorry, for, yeah, for the development of this project, um, we have two approaches and knowing that it was possible to use the Harvard Library API, we first thought on using the JSTOR form spreadsheet that it was given to us to download the images and access the metadata, but this approach would have been too project specific. So our second approach and was the one that I applied uh, uses the Harvard Library Cloud API to download the metadata and images. This API is structured in a standard way by using XML mod schema, and this approach lead me to create a tool that can be applied to multiple projects, not only the American Currency Collection Pilot. So, by using the Harvard Library Cloud API, I knew that it will be more beneficial to interact directly with that API than interacting with the local spreadsheet. And as I built on top of the Harvard API, I thought on the possibility of other projects branching out from my own code. I was able to foresee this because during the during the past year, my training in computational thinking and programming exposed me to other APIs and the benefits of adding computational methods into my practice as an archivist. For those who are itching to play around with the code, I organized the reusable part of the code into two Python classes. The main class is the Harvard item and it and it is a general purpose class that can interact with any cloud API item. This class downloads the media and arranges the metadata spreadsheet that will be validated in Patipan and will enable the uploading process. The second class is the currency item that is more specific for this pilot project but works as an example of how to use the first class. This class retrieves information to describe the numismatics item. For example, the currency item class modifies the file naming convention and it recognizes if an image is the front or back side of an object and it includes it in the naming convention. In my first version of the code, I tried really hard to extract the metadata using JSON because at that moment I felt more comfortable working with dictionary. I did not have experience working with XML that followed a mod schema. And it turns out that my previous experience working with, with HTML mods could be applied to access the data inside the XML mod schema. And by learning the mod namespace rules to retrieve information and letting go of the JSON structure, I could write code more easily and the code could run faster. At this moment of the publishing, the currency item class had the capability of extracting 15 different data fields to describe the item. In Wikimedia, these 15 fields are used to fit an artwork template that will accompany each image uploaded. At the moment of the final upload, at the moment the final up, our final upload is performed by using the Wikimedia Patipan tool. So here you can see a partial example of the 15 metadata fields extracted 
from the API that match the Wikimedia's artwork template. And by utilizing the unique resource names or URN to request the metadata from the Harvard Library Cloud API, the code can precisely pull the appropriate information and build the unique file name that it is used to upload into Wikimedia Commons. So now um, you will see a video that visualizes the process of getting the collection data, creating the final PathyPan spreadsheet that includes the template and the upload process. So now what I am doing here is um, locating the project folder on a terminal or command prompt program. So this program runs with uh, Python 3. And right now, what is uh, the program? You can see the program extracting, downloading the image and extracting the metadata. That is all the lines that you are seeing there. And also it's explaining to you where is located that data and image. Right now you can see the spreadsheet that this program creates. And this spreadsheet, it is needed to validate to PathyPan. Uh, for this spreadsheet, it is important to create a second tab called template. And we are using our GitLab to copy the template that we use, the artwork Wikimedia template that we use to create the Wikimedia page. And we are pasting it into the spreadsheet book. So it is important that this document is saved in a Excel 97 2003 format because this format is the one that Patty Pans accepts. So here you will see me saving it in the uh, in the format in the required format. And now we are using Patty Pan to validate this spreadsheet. And uh, Patty Pan will uh, show you warnings, and these warnings. This, these warnings are related to uh, fields that are in blank that the AP could not retrieve any information. And now uh, PathyPan will allow you to see some examples of how that Wikimedia page will look. So you now need to log in in your Wikimedia account using PathyPan. And the, with already being uh, logging, the upload process begins. As you can see, the, the PathyPan program will show you what image and what metadata is uploading. So we want to share our links of our repo. You can visit us here. And I also think that I will be sharing it in the chat so you can have the link. Thank you. Does uh, anyone have any questions for Amra Scott or Lee? No questions. Wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Great work. Nice job, team. Thank you. I think everyone's just speechless. That's <laughs> I'm going I'm going to stop the recording then.